I know I've never done a sit down video in my bed. I usually do it on my kitchen table, it just makes more sense. But today, I got her, our new little baby, um, in my lap when she's content there. So, I want to do this video because I'm ready. I really want to get it like filmed at least. I'm going to try to edit later today. Not later today, but sometime tonight, maybe, or no, early, early tomorrow morning. But I wanted to film this real quick because I don't know if I will film. I know I'm not going to film this week. No. But I know, I don't know when I'm going to get back to filming again. You never know. I might pick up the camera one day and film because I'm in the mood, like, get my mind, um, occupied by cleaning or stuff like that, you know, because sometimes that can help just keep them busy, get in your routine. So I don't truly know if I'm going to pick up my camera next week or not, but I want to have this video out just in case I don't film, you know what's going on and why I haven't picked up the camera. And all that fun stuff. Yeah. So, you good? There you go. Um, so, I want to get on here. I'll probably cry a lot in this video. So, forgive, if you cry with somebody who's crying, go get a box of dishes because I most likely will cry because I can't even not cry. So, um, when I do finally come back on YouTube, we'll have, there's so many moving parts we had this year. So, we've had a new normal when my husband had the stroke. And we have a new normal because we have a new baby. Um, and now... We have another new normal that I have to live with and everything and everything and it's just so so sad but if you saw the title you know what's going on yeah you got bad Oh, wrong one. There you go. Um, it happened yesterday, so you're probably thinking like, wow, you can <laughs> Yeah, I think what it is, I just want to get, no offense, I want to get this video over with. And take a minute to breathe. <laughs> and not have to worry about, you know. I love y'all, you the subscribers I have. I love them. But I will say that when stuff like this happens, you, you gotta step back, you know? So, um, so I recommend, so I'm telling myself I need to do this video real quick and tell you what's going on. And I don't know when I'm gonna be back. Um, never know. Like, if you saw my Instagram, if you're on my Instagram, um, you saw I posted this particular Sunday, this is a Monday, um, that I had plans to, because it felt so good the day before, I cleaned the whole house, and when I was pregnant, I never had a motivation, I had never had anything to clean my house, and I actually clean up my whole house and I told myself the next day I was just kind of playing out when I was hanging out with my youngest my baby yesterday we were just having a slow Sunday morning um and I was playing out like I wanted to do this week was take each room because I'm still healing so I'm trying to take it easy as much as possible to take each room and like declutter it, get rid of certain things or rearrange or just get each room at some TLC. 
and I wrote that da, da, da. that was the plan this week and I would say that plan is gonna be on the back burner for later in the future because I don't know if I want to do that yet I just want to stay on top of what I need to right now and everything because I do have a household to run I have three little girls I have to take care of so um yeah yum 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 you just playing with it and everything and so I have to do stuff around the house so I want to at least stay on top of like the the basic stuff and then that's it Necessary stuff that just needs to be taken care of to, you know, get through day to day life. Um, but that was my plan. It's just have a slow morning yesterday. Um, I finally got her to sleep yesterday and I was just chilling. Um, my oldest daughter was here. She was sleeping in the living room. She likes to do that on the weekend, sleep in the living room. They have like a little fort and everything, but she just. Fell asleep on the couch. Um, oh, my middle child was at a neighbor's having a sleepover. Um, and I was just having a slow morning. I was about to get up, start some laundry, get me something to eat. And I'm glad I didn't get up. It's about to take a minute just like to say. It's better to talk to camera than a person because when I talk to a person, it's even worse. Um, so I was just relaxing in bed, just no TV, no nothing, just chilling in bed, playing with my phone. I just got her to sleep in her little pillow thing she has over here. Um, and of all of a sudden, I'm just laying there and I thought my husband was playing around because he was starting to shake a little bit, but he was... He was gasping for air. He did that a couple of times and I'm like, are you okay? I'm sitting over here and I'm like, are you okay? And so when I got up to go around and like, make sure he's okay. I would not recommend this to anybody because it's so scary and it shouldn't have happened. Like I told myself yesterday, like. I should be 70 years old dealing with this, not my age. I'm, my, or I'm in my mid 30s and everything. I should be dealing with this, but I know what happens, but. So I went over there on the other side of bed and I shook him a little bit. I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And he didn't say nothing. His mouth is wide open, his eyes are half open and everything. and. Shade them. I was like, "Are you okay? Say something, please. Say something, you know." And everything. And I shook him. He wouldn't do nothing. I was like, "Where's my phone at?" I was like, "The first thing I want to do is call number one. Maybe they could do something." Um. At first, I thought it was a seizure because the way he shook a little bit in the bed when he was trying to gasp for air. So I didn't know truly until after I they took him and everything. I was like, "That." He might have had a heart attack. But at that time I didn't know. And I'm like I'm freaking out. Um, but I stayed calm as much as possible. When I'm over here crying. I'm like I call no one. <laughs> I was like I need an ambulance. I can't. Like she says your husband breathing. And stuff like that. Yeah, you got baby. And I'm like I don't know. I know you can check their pulses here. And check their pulses here. Um, she's like, is his chest rising? And I was like, it's not, re it's not really rising. But he was, br like, she told me to check it around his mouth area, and I did this, and he was somewhat tiny bit breathing. <laughs> you can feel it. So I'm like, okay, he's still breathing, but it's just, uh, it's very, very, very shallow. She's like, okay, I'm going to talk you through it, and I would not recommend this, like, The only thing I can do is like listen to her and just cry and do CPR as much as possible 
So, I was doing CPR to my own husband, <laughs> trying to get his heart to pump and do everything I need to do. Because, you know, I watch a bunch of ER. And I would say... They, you want to keep the blood flowing for your brain because of oxygen. So I'm like, I'm thinking of all that and I'm thinking of like, okay, I just need to keep the oxygen going and keep his heart bumping and everything else. And, you know, and I, I, try, I did my best, like, doing that. She's like, Emma's going to be here on us. I'm going to stay with you. I want you to continue doing it. And I'm like, and she's like, the door unlocked? I was like, thinking to myself, I'm like, no, it's not unlocked. So I put it on mute so I won't be yelling in my phone. Anyway, it was on speaker. I won't be yelling at, like, in the phone. So I did a, like, quick mute on the phone and yelled my daughter's name and said, can you go unlock the door, open it, and everything else. And I know she's freaking out because she's like, what's going on? And she's old enough to know, like, something's going on. And everything else, and I'm just like trying to concentrate on her dad, <laughs> everything else. And thankfully, she was calm and like sleeping <laughs> through this. I couldn't imagine like trying to do that, tell my oldest one to do what she needs to do, <laughs> and have her screaming. You know, I would think it was a blessing that she actually fell asleep and everything else and stuff. So I'm dealing with that, and then the analyst came and um got him on the stretcher he just when they did it he just looked so limp you know it, it was just <sighs> and they put this machine on him to do cpr and stuff like that and and they got him in the ambulance and everything and I was like okay and they got him going off finally it took a minute but they got him off like on the road and then I was thinking okay I got three girls I need to figure out to watch the kids I know my neighbors will watch my oldest one so I was just more focused on my baby cuz I'm I haven't really had anybody where really to watch her since she's been born because, you know, I'm still in that newborn stage and everything and stuff. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> you really trapped me. Um, you know, she popped her eyes off her. Um, but I was like, call my mom. And I knew she went to church that day. She already said the day before she would go to the church. So I was like, I told, her, I told my oldest, and I was like, Trying to get in touch with your grandma, and I was like, I know she wanted to get Jesus today, so I know where she's at, and I know why she's not answering. So I'm like, but I called her and I called her, and I know one of my neighbors at the end of the road would take the girls, and I trust them with even the newborn and everything else. Hold on, sorry, that was a phone call I had to take. Um. Uh, so I got my neighbor to watch them and stuff like that and I ran back I didn't even bother like I got dressed I'm still wearing what I wore yesterday which I'm about to get dressed and get myself together um yeah um so I ran back in the house like I was running around the house before grabbing diapers grabbing four months because I was supposed to go to Walmart yesterday to get newborn diapers the only thing I have is ones so I was like we just gonna wing it today when we wear ones and I put a one on her last night and I was like yeah I need to go get some newborns because they're not too too big but they're they, they're kind of big they're not mm, I don't want nothing sneaking out of them okay <laughs> And that's, I know that's a sidetrack, but I'm like running around, grabbing my formula, grabbing some clean bottles, grabbing um, an outfit just in case, um, this and that. You know, like when my oldest one's fine, like usually you know, I can get them dressed and they're cool and they, they will get them spoiled over there. But with her, I had to make sure she had everything she needed because I know they don't have no bottles and formula and stuff like that. So I was like, let me grab all this. I'm running around. 
and then we went down the street, dropped her, dropped them off, and everything, and asked, can you watch them, and everything else. I'm trying to figure out who that was watching today. I'm trying to get stuff organized. Um, uh, and everything. But, running around the house, dropped them off, got in the car. Actually, I ran back in the house because I had to grab my car keys. Grab my car keys. I was like, only I need is my keys and my phone. That's all I need. He's been to this hospital so many times. They should have all his information. Come to find out, they didn't know his name or anything. And I'm like, you asked for like his medical history. No offense. I, I'm not trying to diss the ambulance people, but you gotta be specific. I'm already l losing it over here. You gotta be specific. I, if you asked for a medical card, I would have gave him real quick because it's got a name and everything on it. Um, but they asked for his medical history, like anything written down for his medical history. I'm like, who keeps that? <laughs> you know? So, but they called me right when I got to the ER. He's like, what's your husband's name? Um, but the funny thing is, I had my phone number. You know what I mean? It does, that right there, I think about back on it. I was like, wait a minute, you called me. So you had to know who he was. You called me. <laughs> um, and his date of birth and his name and everything. And then they let me in the ER. They took me to a room. So I didn't even see them working on him or anything. I didn't get to see him. They just took me to this room. And I was like, oh, this is bad. This is bad. I've never been in this room before. So I'm like, this is bad. This is, like, I say good. Because I've always went in that ER plenty of times over the year. Not only that before that, like when we had the, it, like he fell or this and that and stuff, he went to the ER. I've never been in his room. So I was like, I've always went with him or met, like the last time he did the ambulance with the stroke, that he let me go to his room. So I was like, oh, this ain't good. This ain't good. <laughs> but I was like, Trying to be positive, but I was like, this ain't good. And I'm going in this room. And this nurse told me, she's like, the doctor's going to be with you. And I was like, thinking about this ain't good. Like they said in a, mo in a movie, it's like, this ain't going to end pretty. Um, so I'm like sitting there and just thinking about the whole scenario. Thinking about my girl. <laughs> and everything. Um... So, I'm thinking about that, and my mom was going to go pick up the girls, because I finally got in touch with her, saying, she's like, I'm at church, and I'm like, can you go outside? It's important. Like, this is, like, very, very important. I need you to go outside that church. Um, and she did, and I told her what she was going on. She just, she left, and she came over to the neighbors and they was like oh we got him we got him go with her and everything so she met me up there and everything so and when she got there we talked a little bit and told her what went down she been asleep um and everything and the doctor came in with all the nurses i was like oh excuse my language oh shit this ain't good. It's okay if one doctor came in. It's like the whole nurses and doctors came in. I was like, oh, this ain't good. This ain't good. So, the doctor told me that they tried everything they can, could. They even shot them in the ambulance and everything else. And they tried everything, but his heart was just too weak and he could not come back. So, and we just talked a little bit and this and that, and I will recommend this to anybody who gets married, that you, re like I had a friend saying, you guys talked about that? And I'm like, we talked about it years ago. 
just to know, because you never know. I recommend if you get married, at least in the first year, some I, it's a terrible subject to talk about, but you need to talk about it, because you never know. How, but me and my husband already talked of how we wanted our, what do we want? We want to be buried, we want to be cremated, this and that and all. So I would recommend you talking to your spouse, so they'll know a, a somewhat idea. I know my husband wants to be buried. I know what funeral home he wants to use, everything else. Oh, no, I don't know nothing else. <laughs> um, so, I gotta text my friend real quick, because if not, she will be late getting here. And everything, um, so they let us sit with him, and he just looked like he was sleeping, because lately, he's been sleeping with his mouth wide open, and mom was, my mom's a nurse, she's like, that's probably because he couldn't get a lot of oxygen if he slept the other way. So, I was like, he just looked like he's sleeping, and we really don't, it just looked like he was sleeping. <laughs> But the one face I could get out of my mind was when it happened and how his face looked. I don't, I even, I like told one of my friends, I was like, I wouldn't recommend that. Like, I can't get that look out of my head. And I thought about back in, like, when my grandparents passed away and my stepdad passed away, I was never there when it passed. So I feel like it hits me harder this time around. Not because he's my husband and stuff, but I feel like that's one of the scenarios, but the other scenario is actually being there, because I've never been there for any of my family members when they passed. When my stepdad was dealing with cancer towards the end, um, I didn't go even go in the room. When I went to my mom's, I didn't even go in the room. I didn't want to see him like that. I want to have the picture that I have in my head. <laughs> Always. I don't want to see that that one you know um so i feel like that's a little different like this time is different because i was here and i saw it and i just it hit different um so we sat with them um and everything else we sat there for a good minute because i knew once we leave i know i'm gonna see at the funeral home this is the last time I get to see my husband. So I know I'm going to see him for a little bit at the funeral home. But this will be the last time I see him actually in a bed. <laughs> Not in a casket kind of thing. You know, so I was like, I really didn't want to leave. But I also have three girls. And also, I've been crying so much. And I got a headache. Like it was killer. And I figured out it's because I'm crying so much. Also, all this and all that. I haven't ate all day. I haven't drank all day. So, so I knew I had to go home and actually take care of myself a little bit. And also, I want to be with my girls. Um, but I just didn't want to leave because that would be legit the last time I was home. I've seen him in the hospital bed, so I'm just thinking to myself, he's just sleeping. You know? So. That's why I kind of stayed there for longer than I, I feel like people would. Because I don't, I just didn't want to see him. Let go of that picture of just sleeping in the bed and everything. Because I knew the next time I see him, would be in the casket. And I'm. And right there, it's going to hit me. And think about it. The funeral hasn't even happened yet. So, I'm doing this video because. Before the funeral. Because right now, it's calm. 
all the kids are asleep. This one just fell asleep. Ain't no visitors yet. Because I got home yesterday. I laid down a little bit. Got her down. Ate me a little something something. And then people started knocking. And then after they knocked and knocked and knocked. And everything. So. It's one reason I'm filming it now. Because it's actually calm. The kids are not awake. No visitors yet. And I told my friends this. I was like. They should have a mandatory thing of like 24 hours of like nobody coming by and stuff you know and everything I think that's the hardest part it's like I know some people thrive like ham and company that's how they cope. And I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like, after the funeral, I would love for, like, me a family and, like, my close friends coming to my house. And, like, because I've done this to, I've done this before with a funeral before. Um, I just come back out of the house and just crack jokes and this and that and just reminisce on the memories and stuff. That will make my day, but that I love that kind of moment but at first like right now like I just like yesterday I just want to be alone <laughs> <laughs> and everything and I just want to be like at the beginning I want to process myself I want to cry myself first before you know I get around company you know let me process this first before y'all come over and everything else I'm not gonna say no I mean most people who came never text me to come over or not but I'm thankful they came um but I think anybody should have like me I like to have process it first cause I'm over here like Wow. Because I'm still processing the whole scenario. It happened that morning. I'm like, whoa. What just went down? Kind of thing. So. But. Next time I'll be on my channel, it'll be a new normal of. Weird to say at my age. A widower? A single mom? I was, like I said in a video before this one, I'm like, I felt like a single mom in a way because he was dealing with so much and he couldn't do nothing really physically and everything else that I felt like a single mom anyway, but now I have to have the reality of saying you are a single mom now. Your, your kid's only parent left. Um, I mean, I thought about back like last last week. I was like, regardless, he couldn't really do nothing physically. He was there for his kids, and my oldest walked in here every day, go chat at night, and hugged him good night, and everything else. But all that, um, my. Each middle child was sick last week and I had her doctor appointment and then my oldest was at school I got to leave my middle child here with him and stuff like that and that was weird to look at it that way but like I won't have the option I don't have my partner my kid's father to be there like if they need him um he was always good at math. And now my, I gotta figure it out. It's just... You know, it's just... It's, it's sad. And then... I'm about to finish up this video. But... They get on it. My oldest... Has had a rough year. Um... Just think about her. 
I'll get I'll get through it. It just it'll take time. And like I told one of my friends, I was like, I'm ready to get like I tell people like once this is over I'm gonna get my kids back in their routine of their stuff and everything else because that's the best thing you could do. I mean it's gonna be a different kind of routine, you know. But, and everything else, but I just feel like my oldest, that's what we're worried about the most. I'm not worried, I'm worried about my, my middle child, like, but in a way she really doesn't know what's really, really, really going on. But my oldest was here when it happened, and all of that, she lost Both of her favorite people in the world. One was her dad. And then her grandpa. Those were the two favorite men in her life. Like her favorite people, her men, her person, everything. They were their her favorite. I might have came down a little lower. But I'm a, but like I always pick, I'm like my second child, I'm her favorite, so we don't get jealous. <laughs> But what it makes it worse is that she literally lost both of her favorite people less than a year of each other. You know? She really did. Because her grandpa passed in December and now this. So I feel like I gotta be there for her extra compared to my second child. I will be there for her but my first, my first child, like, I could not imagine. Like, I've had father figures in my life, and my dad, someone around, and stuff like that. But I could not imagine, like, not having him at all. Like, I have no option of calling him or anything like that. I could not imagine. I never thought I wouldn't, it would happen, like, maybe when we're older. But growing up and you're still a kid and you're growing up with, your, with no dad. It's just, it's sad to think about. It. And I have to be there for her. Because the only thing I thought about was her yesterday. Um, my second child, I'm going to be there for her. But I feel like she won't process it until a little older. But like, oh, wait a minute. Kind of thing. Cause she's still young. She's she knows something. Like she knows what happened and stuff. But she knows something's up and stuff. But I think it hits. I'm not trying to diss the middle child. You know how to say the middle child always a uh, neglected one. It ain't that. It's her age and stuff. And it's hard to how they process it and stuff. But I think on my oldest because that was her two favorite people. And she's a little older. She knows what the heck's going on. But then I think about my youngest one. Who is going to be a month old tomorrow. Will grow up with no daddy. Will not even have a bond with her daddy. And it's, it's sad to know that. That she would not have her dad around at all. I would say... My other two had their dad around to help with homework, to help with sports, to do this and that, go fishing. Saturday say she will not have that. You know, she won't have her dad around. And it's a hard pill to swallow is to know that my youngest one would never have her dad around. Never would know him, like, physically. I will, I mean, we could talk. I mean, she probably asks pictures and stuff around the house. Who's that? And stuff like that and everything. And I will break my heart, too, when she starts asking. But, you know, it's just, just knowing my youngest one would not have a dad at all. It's just, it's sad. It's real, real sad. And even if, like, 
my my dog loves to mess with that door. Um, like it had happened before December and stuff like that, and this happened. At least she had her grandpa. That's who I had mostly as growing up, but she won't even have him. She has her other grandpa, but no offense. I love the man. I love my father-in-law and everything, but he's just not around compared to what my, their other grandpa was, my stepdad. He was around a lot more. He was at games, practices, always wanted him every weekend, um, want to go on trips with him, do this and that and everything else. He don't nearly do any of that. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out. How I won't deal with that scenario of her not having... Because you gotta have a... I want to say you gotta have a man. No. No, 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 no. I just want like a good father figure around. Like an uncle or something. So she can have somebody to go to, you know? That's the only thing I'm looking at. But... It's just sad to know that my month old would not have her dad. At all. Uh, but I just want to pop on here I know this video is long if you made it to the end thank you I will be back on this channel again in the future I don't know it might be the near future it might be a few weeks I just gotta let myself process this I gotta let my I gotta take care of my kids I gotta let them process all this and everything else so it's a lot It's just crazy to think that. But. If you cried with me. I do the same thing when people start crying too. <laughs> so. But uh. I'll see y'all guys in my next video. And everything else. And. Yeah. We just gotta get through it. You know. Just gotta get through it. I'm about to go have my uh, quick cup of coffee because I have to, sadly say, go somewhere. You can guess where. And I need to get myself dressed and I need to get the girls somewhat dressed for the day. Even if they don't go anywhere because I have somebody coming to watch them. So, and everything else. So. So I'm gonna get myself dressed, come me a cup of coffee, find me something to eat real quick. So, so yeah. But I'll see y'all next time. And yeah, I don't even know what to say, <laughs> but I'll see you on my next video, whenever it is.